Hey y'all, welcome to Rico's Garage, part two of our Dana 60 build-up. I showed you in an earlier video this Dana 60 axle that we're going to build for Cream Puff, my buddy's 4BT powered TJ. Showed you the pile of parts back there on the table that we're going to put in this thing. Today's video is going to concentrate all on the disassembly. Now previously I have shown you a Dana 60 video in our YJ crawler where we did the wheel bearings. There were some different things on that axle, the disc brake setup and the drive slugs that didn't necessarily apply to a stock Chevy Dana 60. This axle, despite having the truss and the steering mount, is still stock Chevy truck from the knuckles out. So this video will be beneficial if you are doing wheel bearings, if you're doing kingpins, or if you're going all the way into the diff like we are, you're going to have to disassemble it up to that point. We are disassembling this to a bare housing. We're going to show you that in this video. A few of the parts we're going to reuse, but most of it is hitting the sale pile or the scrap pile because we're replacing it with all that nice shiny aftermarket stuff back there. And then in part three, we'll start with the reassembly. So let's get to getting and get this thing apart. First thing we're going to start out with is the wheel end. The first thing we're going to take off uh, is the brake caliper. Then we'll remove the locking hub as this still has the stock uh, lockout hubs on it. We'll take the wheel bearing assembly apart. Brake bracket, spindle, axle shaft, knuckles, so on and so forth. First thing we need is to not let that fall on us and kill us is an Allen wrench. Stock Chevrolet brake setup uses one shoulder bolt out here on the end with a quarter inch Allen. This bolt, see it has the shoulder and a quarter inch Allen. Do not lose this bolt. This bolt is expensive and depending on where you live, hard to obtain. So keep this in a safe place if you're going to reuse the stock Chevy brakes. Then we drive out the wedge. Drive out the wedge, the keeper spring. Depending on how frozen the caliper is. Caliper brake pads come off. Those are hitting the scrap pile. We won't be reusing those. Next we switch to an eighth inch. Remove these six Allen head screws. Lockout cap comes off. Grab a small screwdriver. Pull the retaining ring out. Grab our snap ring pliers. Move our snap ring. Out does not want to play nice. Just needed some persuasion. Pull the body of the lockout out. Grab our Dana 60 axle nut socket. Dana 60 uses the big four pin. Dana 
don't have one, you can get them. Most parts stores have them on their tool rental. However, if you're going to be doing this, you're going to be doing this procedure quite a bit. Strongly recommend purchasing one. You can get them literally anywhere. Oven rotor a pull. We'll just leave the bearing in there for now. Set this off to the side. Keep plenty of shop rags on hand. You're gonna need them. This job gets messy. Brake brackets coming off, hitting the scrap pile. That never comes off that easy. This axle has been very well maintained. I'm glad to see. Move our axle shaft, set it off to the side, with that out of the way, we'll move on to what we do if we were doing a kingpin job. So we'll start with removing this high steer arm. If you're doing a stock ap application, the driver's side would have the push-pull steering arm, the passenger side would just have a, metal, a sheet metal cap over it. We'll get more into that when we go to put it back together. tap the spacer goes strictly for the high steer arm remove this bushing Kingpin bolts. Lower kingpin. And the knuckle lifts right off. Dries out our lower bearing and seal. Discard that because new ones come in the kit. That dries out our lower race and our dust cap, which also gets discarded. Clean our grease out of our kingpin. Put in our kingpin removal tool, which is nothing more than a piece of 7 8 hex stock. 
this gun takes this out, I will be thoroughly impressed. I have my doubts, but I gotta try it. I knew it wouldn't do it. But if I didn't try it, there'd be somebody in the comments saying, well, my Milwaukee wouldn't have done that. <laughs> Not this time. Resist the urge to pick that up. We're just gonna let that cool off for a little bit. Just enough oil in there to make a mess. Normally I would tell you that before you do this, make sure you mark your caps, not only as far as orientation left and right, but top and bottom. Reason being is when they machine these axles, they actually line bore the caps similar to a crankshaft in an engine. So you need to make sure they're placed back in the proper orientation. However, with that being said, somebody's been here before because these caps are already marked. So, let's get a uh, three-quarter socket and a swivel because our truss is right in the way. And pop these caps off. Take an old shop rag, lay it in your ring gear, turn the pinion by hand. It'll hit some resistance and grab you a tool. Spin. Spin the yoke after we get our socket fit. And 
as it works that rag in there. It will push the carrier out of the housing. and destroy your rag in the process so don't do this with your wife's good dish towels it's slowly pushing out on this side Okay, last night I was riding the struggle bus trying to get this carrier out of here. My rag trick only did so much good. And you, Yes, I'm aware they make case spreaders. However, case spreaders are expensive. I'm poor. You do the math. Anyway, I finally got it pried out of there, took the nut off the yoke, and removed the pinion gear. Only to look up at the camera and realize it decided it had enough and it quit for the day. So I followed suit and did the same and went in the house. Came back in this morning, cleaned up all the mess around here, and now we're going to get back in to finish and disassembling this thing. As I said, I removed the pinion gear. You do so by taking the inch and 5 16 nut off, remove the yoke, Give it a little tap because the outer pinion bearing is a slight press fit and you remove it from the housing. When you do that, make sure you keep track of all the little shims that go between the pinion gear and the outer pinion bearing. That sets your pinion preload and you will need all these shims as a baseline when you go to set up your new gear set, which I will show you later. For now, I'm just going to set this off to the side. Our differential case also has shims behind the bearing that we're going to need to measure for a baseline. So we'll set that off to the side. We'll disassemble that on the bench later. Next on the disassembly, there's two seals where the differential housing meets the tubes. Those seals are necessary to keep the oil inside of here. Because of the design of the axle with the open knuckles and everything, there's no way to seal, so it has to seal inside here. So we'll, we'll hit that with the pry bar. Just take our pry bar. Came out in two pieces, but it's really one unit. That's what your seal looks like. It has a little ramp that faces towards the outside of the axle, so that when you put the shaft in, it guides it up over this seal. I win. Next, we're going to knock the outer bearing out and our races. 
on the inner race be careful when removing it stay closer to the inside diameter of the race instead of the outside because there's shims between the race and the housing with such a pinion depth and just like the other shims we're going to need those for a baseline so we don't want to tear them up we're not going to reuse them but we want them to be in the best shape possible to get an accurate measurement with a vernier caliper take out the seal the oil slinger and the outer bearing set those off to the side take our hammer had a long drift Remove the inner race. One race gone. Now, we'll remove our shims, set them off to the side. race out with the race removed that pretty much concludes disassembly of the housing itself now we'll go over to the bench do some disassembly on our sub assemblies and then we'll haul everything off get it pressure washed and then we'll be ready for assembly so I'm gonna take a few minutes reset everything up luckily for you do the magic of editing it's just going to be in the next frame. So, over to the bench we go. Okay, we've carried our parts over here. You may or may not be able to read this, but over here I've marked the places on the bench. Non-ring gear side, ring gear side, pinion preload, and inner pinion. That is where I'm going to lay all my shims, so when the time comes to measure them, I know what's what. These that I had laying here are our inner pinion shims. We'll give them a quick wipe, lay them there accordingly. The smaller ones on the pinion gear are pinion preload. We'll lay those there, double check, make sure we got them all. We no longer need the pinion gear now because we're replacing the ring and pinion as well as new bearings. If you were doing a bearing job, naturally you would have to press this bearing off and then put your new bearing and your slinger on your existing pinion gear. But that's not necessary in our application, so we're just going to put this in the pile. Next, we'll pull our wrenches off. Again, not needed because we're replacing. If you were doing something such as putting in a lunchbox locker, for replacing spider gear, something like that, and you weren't changing bearings, you would want to make the same marks, ring gear side, non-ring gear side, and put these back where they went. To remove the bearings without damage, you would use a setup similar to this, this knife edge puller. However, the largest one I have is too small for these. So, if you don't have that puller, or if you're in a situation like me and it's too small which is not that uncommon of a problem for me I'm going to show you a way to work around that. Begin by removing this outer cage and these rollers. <laughs> Simple cut off wheel works just fine. <laughs> now that we've removed the cage and the rollers Our inadequately sized knife edge puller can grab what's left of the bearing. If you don't have these pullers, 
you can very carefully score what's left of this bearing with a cutoff wheel. Don't cut all the way through. Just score most of the way. Take a sharp chisel, knock it, and that will spread this enough to pull it out. But we have the puller. Actually, you can't use this puller and go into the carrier because there's a hole there for the axle. But, some nice thick flat washers and a half inch bolt will stand in and do the job required. With that removed, we can access our shim pack. These shims do a couple different jobs. Not only do they establish carrier bearing preload, because these are the carrier bearings naturally, they also set backlash depending on which side they're on, whether they move the ring gear closer or farther away from the pinion gear. So, this is our non-ring gear side. We'll lay it over here on the non-ring gear side. We'll flip over. Rinse and repeat. Now, save one of these pieces for when you go to put your bearings back on. I'll show you later. And that's it. We're not using anything else. Our install kit comes with new bolts, which even if you were just doing a bearing job, change your ring gear bolts, it's cheap insurance, they come with them. We're not using the ring and pinion, we're not using this case, because we're going all new. But, I'm a hoarder, and we'll keep this, just in case somebody wants to put a lunchbox locker in, or if we buy another project that has an open front, you never know, we may end up with another square body. So, we'll file these away. any place to store it. So that concludes the disassembly of our Dana 60 axle. The next step, which I'm not going to video because it's going to be extremely boring, load up everything, haul it down to the car wash. The smaller stuff will wash in the parts washer, the spindles, knuckles, hubs, things of that nature. And when you tune in next week, we'll start assembling this bad boy. Drop a comment down below if you wish. I love hearing from you guys. If you like this video, hit the like. Uh, share it with somebody if you think it may help them out. If you want to see more of this content, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you'll see when we post new videos. We've been on hiatus for a while. There's been a lot going on. Life gets in the way, but we're ready to move forward now. We've got all that stuff taken care of for the most part. Now we're going to go back to making content for you guys. So, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you later.